Welcome to the Pressure Relief Valve Replacement Training Module prepared by California Controlled Atmosphere and Resource Compliance. In this module, you will learn through demonstration how to safely replace relief valves. We will provide instructions for dual relief valve assemblies configured with a three-way isolation valve and also for single relief valves installed directly on a vessel or compressor. Additionally, we will discuss the different features of relief valves and types of relief vent indicators. First, let's look at various types of relief valves and relief valve configurations. Essentially, all relief valves used in the ammonia refrigeration industry are spring-loaded to pop off at the valve set pressure. In recent years, all major valve manufacturers have begun to manufacture cartridge-style relief valves that render it possible to replace a relief valve without disconnecting the discharge piping. These valves offer substantial savings in labor required to replace a relief valve. There are two common relief valve configurations that you should be familiar with. Single relief valve. For smaller equipment, such as pressure vessels with a volume less than 10 cubic feet, it is acceptable to install a single relief valve for overpressure protection. When replacing a single relief valve, the equipment must be isolated and completely pumped down. Dual relief valve. A dual relief valve assembly is required for all pressure vessels with a volume greater than 10 cubic feet. The benefit of a dual relief valve assembly is that the equipment protected by the assembly does not have to be pumped down and isolated when replacing a valve since one relief valve is providing protection at all times. It can be difficult to determine if a relief valve has lifted. For this reason, relief valves or relief piping may be equipped with indicators to assist operators in determining if a relief valve has lifted. Here are two different types of relief valve indicators. Rupture disc and non-resetting gauge. A rupture disc is a non-reclosing overpressure protection device that is designed to rupture at a predetermined set pressure. When installed upstream of a relief valve in conjunction with a non-resetting gauge, one can decipher from a gauge if a relief valve has lifted in the past. Rupture discs are an additional cost as they are installed upstream of each relief valve and are required to be replaced when ruptured. Additionally, rupture discs have been known to fail when installed in areas with significant vibration. Tattle Relief Vent Indicator The Tattle Relief Vent Indicator uses a paddle mounted to a stainless steel rotating shaft. This shaft passes through an aluminum housing and is seated with O-rings. The paddle forms a gate through which gas must pass in order to go through the indicator. On the outside, a flag is connected to the shaft and on rotation of the paddle is raised to indicate a change in the gate position. This raised flag, visible from a distance, has tattled that the gas has passed through the device and a release has occurred. By installing a tattle downstream of all relief valves in a system, an operator can perform a visual inspection without the use of specialized equipment. Because they can be seen from a distance, tattles can be installed in areas that are difficult to access, thus preventing an unnecessary and difficult in-depth inspection process. This ease of use saves time and effort and can prevent accidents and injuries associated with the inspection process. When replacing relief valves, ensure to follow all facility safety rules and wear proper personal protective equipment or PPE. Commonly required PPE at ammonia refrigeration facilities may include the following. Safety vest, hard hat, hearing protection, safety glasses, personal ammonia monitor, air purifying respirator. In general, pressure relief valves are required to be installed on all pressure vessels and compressors and must be replaced every five years or when a relief valve has lifted. 
There are exceptions that allow for bench testing in lieu of replacement, but that is outside the scope of this module. Here is the procedure for replacing a single relief valve installed directly on a vessel or compressor. Step 1. Before replacing a single relief valve, the component that is being protected must be pumped out to avoid loss of refrigerant to the atmosphere. Step 2. Close and tag the isolation valves associated with the pressure vessel. Refer to the facility lockout tagout program. Step 3. Connect an ammonia-rated hose to service the valve on the pressure vessel. Step 4. Connect the other end of the hose to a 5-gallon bucket of water. Step 5. Remove liquid ammonia from the pressure vessel by opening the service valve. Step 6. Continue to allow the vapor remaining in the vessel to escape the approved location. Step 7. Once all ammonia vapor has been removed, allow the pumped out vessel to sit for one hour to check if any ammonia is left in the vessel. If vessel pressure rises above 0 PSIG, restart the pump out procedure and reevaluate the vessel to 0 PSIG. Repeat this step until vessel procedure remains at 0 PSIG. It is nearly impossible to remove all ammonia vapor from the vessel, and some odor in the room will be noticeable. Step 8. Now that the vessel has been pumped out, disconnect the relief valve from the connected relief vent piping, then remove the relief valve from the component. Step 9. Remove the shipping cap from both the inlet and outlet of the new relief valve, then install the valve. Step 10. Reconnect the relief vent piping to the new relief valve. Ensure to apply thread sealing compound to external pipe threads and use a modest amount to avoid getting compound inside the valve. Step 11. Return the component to normal operation by opening all isolation valves that were closed in Step 2.
Step 12. Punch or mark the installation tag to indicate the date the relief valve has been installed. Here is the procedure for replacing a pressure relief valve on a dual relief assembly configured with a three-way isolation valve. Step 1. Isolate the relief valve and related piping from the refrigeration system. The three-way valve stem should be positioned so that the relief valve being replaced is not exposed to pressure. The valve can be either front seated, front port is closed, or back seated, back port is closed. Step 2. Disconnect the relief valve from the connected relief vent piping, then remove the relief valve from the three-way isolation valve. Step 3. Remove the shipping caps from both the inlet and outlet of the new relief valve, then install on the three-way isolation valve. Step 4. Reconnect the relief vent piping to the new relief valve. Ensure to apply thread sealing compound to the external pipe threads and use a modest amount to avoid getting compound inside the valve. Step 5. Punch or mark the installation tag to indicate the date the relief valve was installed. Cartridge style relief valves have gained in popularity over the past few years because of the labor savings offered when replacing a relief valve. Here is the procedure for replacing a cartridge style relief valve on a dual relief valve assembly configured with a three-way isolation valve. Step 1. Isolate the relief valve and related piping from the refrigeration system. The three-way valve stem should be positioned so that the relief valve being replaced is not exposed to pressure. The valve can be either front seated, front port is closed, or back seated, back port is closed. Step 2. Close the gauge valve which is connected to the pressure containing portion of the system between the three-way isolation valve and the cartridge. Step 3. 
Remove the pressure gauge from the gauge valve. Step 4. Slowly open the gauge valve to relieve any residual pressure between the three-way isolation valve and the cartridge. Step 5. Remove the cartridge from the body of the relief valve. Step 6. Install the new cartridge. Step 7. Reinstall the pressure gauge. Step 8. Punch or mark the installation tag to indicate the date the relief valve was installed. The following are important precautionary measures to take when replacing a pressure relief valve. Never expose your face or body to a connected relief valve exit or piping. Make sure the relief valve setting and capacity meet the requirements per system design in accordance with good engineering practices. Install the relief valve on the equipment at a location above the liquid refrigerant level. Do not install shutoff valves in line with relief valves. Install valves in locations where they will not be damaged by moving equipment, such as lift trucks. Install valves in a manner that enables them to be replaced. Vent the relief valve exit to a safe outdoor location in an approved manner away from people and building openings. Do not install valves in a refrigerated space unless precautions are taken to prevent moisture mitigation into the valve body or relief vent line. Use brackets or hangers to support the pipe and prevent the valve from being overly stressed. Do not put undue stress on the valve by using it to stretch or line the pipe. Never attempt to reset or change a relief valve set pressure. Relief valves are accurately factory set and do not require any field adjustments whatsoever. They are intended for one-time overpressure operation and should be replaced immediately after discharging because setting or seat tightness may be altered. Always replace relief valves once they have discharged. This concludes the relief valve replacement training module prepared by California Controlled Atmosphere and Resource Compliance. Thank you for your participation.